Namaste everyone. Uh, greetings from Anshuman Tiwari and Manage Better. Uh, so glad to be here. This is our 44th show, not counting the quality series that I do. So very pleased with the affection and fondness that I receive from you all. Many of you have messaged uh, very encouraging comments over the last two, three years that I've been doing this. And uh, it is now you know, reached a stage where I feel like it is my duty and responsibility to keep bringing these shows to you. So here I am with yet another interesting show, a topic that has actually been requested earlier. Uh, very few topics have been requested. Most of the topics I bring the guest and I think, OK, this will be a good topic. How can I, you know, merge it with the manage better uh, branding that I have? But today's topic was requested. So this today's topic is about how do how do we plan for financial independence uh, as we get ahead in our career? Right? So I will share a little bit about that and then we get into the show. So, of course, you know, as, as you get a little older and you get your in your career, uh, you know a thing or two about financial independence, right? But um, usually that is not enough. The, the as I touched 50 last year, I realized that many goals were slipping away from my grip. And it was important that I take a handle or get a handle on those goals. Uh, some goals are related to, you know, things you wanted to do, like writing a book or, or you know, or money or general life or relationships and, and, and the likes, right? But uh, I, of course, can't solve all of this, not neither for myself nor for you. But money was a common theme for many of these goals. I will be the last person to say that money is everything, but money is actually very, very important, right? If you don't take care of your own money, nobody else will. So it is like health also, right? If you invest in it, it will grow. If you invest in your health, it will get better and, and that kind of thing. So, and obviously also with the recent, uh, you know, layoffs in in certain industries people have become a little bit more uncertain about what is the future will we have enough money uh, inflation is going up job uncertainty is higher uh, upskilling may solve some problems but may not solve everything there are new realities that our generation is facing that was not faced by our parents and so on and of course our children will face even more new uncertainties so money has actually become a very very important part of our life Another factor which I will quickly share is that life expectancy globally and in India has significantly increased in, in the last 25 years or so. Right? I'll give you an example. In India, in 2000, life expectancy was 62, 62 years in India, only 22 years ago at the cusp of the millennium. And now it is 71. So we will, in general, on an average, live for nine more years. What are you and me going to do for those nine more years? And where will be the money coming from to take care of ourselves? And how will we plan for that money? So that itself has set me thinking that if we are going to live longer, we obviously want to live longer in a healthy form. You know, you don't want to drag along. So, and that will need money. So which means that money has to be invested and earned today and not at 70. So with that, background and inference uh, and of course you know one important thing is that the retirement age is, is the same in most companies so you just live longer without any uh, income so i don't want to scare any of you but it is important that we understand the context and uh, at this stage i usually check that um, who all are online so we have our good friends on um, uh, linkedin of course and i can see that the show today is live on YouTube and Twitter. I'm just checking my dashboard here. So thank you very much. If somebody has joined on YouTube and is in a position to type, uh, just let me know where you are from and what if you have a question. We already have Om and Riddhi and Prabha Shankar on LinkedIn. And I can see there are many more people on LinkedIn. So if you are on LinkedIn, give me a shout out and ask me something that you would ask, want to ask our uh, guest. So I'll now bring in the guest, but before I bring in, I will give you a short introduction. I asked him for an introduction and he gave me barely an introduction. Like, you know, so uh, I had to actually cobble together the introduction. But good friend, Vinod Bhatt is a senior vice president, portfolio manager, and equity strategist at uh, Aditya Birla Sun Life um, EMC. 
AMC is asset management company, as many of you may know. Uh, Vinod comes with an overall experience of over two decades, and you know a lot of that is into the same space of banking and financial uh, management or services. He's been with this company, Adit Billa Group, for since 2018. But that's not the reason he's here. He's here because he's written, recently written a book, uh, which is already busting the charts. I will show you the book. Uh, he He's a very reluctant person, so later on he may not allow me to show you the book. So here it is, Running the Financial uh, Independence Marathon. And this book has uh, really opened the eyes for many people, including me, that uh, if we don't start running now, we may not have time to run. So And how to run that. So anyway, coming back to the introduction. So he's, of course, played various roles in, um, in Villa Group and earlier with Credit Suisse and Ocean Park Advisors in the US as well. We know there's a CFA and has done his MBA in finance from the Wharton School and um, University of, Wharton School, of course, University of Pennsylvania, MS in industrial engineering. So that is where we have something in common. I have a BE in industrial engineering, so sim slightly similar, and many other qualifications, including from uh, IIT Bombay. Uh, and one more thing, he's a marathoner, regular marathoner. So I have been one earlier. I have taken a break for three, four years. Um, and so that also is a little bit common. With that, I'll invite Vinod into the stream. Vinod ji, Namaskar. How are you Namaskar. today? Good, good. I am being uh, so welcome. welcome to the show. And um, anything you would like to add or, or give any opening comments before we get into the questions yeah, no, apart from uh, the book i i have right. already shown the book uh, so this is um, already doing really well on amazon uh, so congratulations on that and uh, looking forward to the show today but any opening comments that you have sure no first of all uh, i really want to thank you anshuman for having me on your show uh, you know, we got acquainted during the LECAP program and uh, met in Bangalore also. And since then, I mean, I'm uh, always amazed by your support, not just for me, but for all the entire LECAP cohort, like, you know, all our, any messages that we put up, posts that we put up, you're the, typically the first one to like and respond and like, you know, show your encouragement. So, uh, you know, very, very few people are so generous. Uh, so that's what makes you stand out. And... Uh, also admire your consistency in terms of like the book reviews that you do where every week you're putting out a review for a book, right? So that is also something that immediately makes you stand out, maintaining that consistency. And right now I see, you know, our relationship more like a symbiotic one where I am writing and, you know, you, you are reading and giving a review. So, <laughs> so that works well for us. And I just want to mention, like, just to add to what you said, my book, The Financial Independence Marathon is all about how we can manage our finances better. And since your show is titled Manage Better, so I think like, you know, it's apt that we discuss that today. So, No, absolutely. And uh, I think um, I, like I said in the intro to the show, I got interested into financial, I won't say independent, but better financial management uh, a few years ago when I started to realize that, look, we will, of course, continue to make some money, you know, God willing, we'll continue to have a job and continue to make some money. But if we don't manage it well, it doesn't grow. And that's where I started learning about the power of compounding and other topics and um, started investing heavily in mutual funds and some stocks. I burnt my fingers as well, but that's part of learning, right? So, uh, which we will cover later on. So, and every year I've noticed that my own understanding of the game has become better. But when I started reading this one, I said, okay, I don't know the surface even, you know, so there is so much more to know. Uh, so thank you, first of all, for writing this book um, and, and writing it in a very engaging manner. So those who haven't read the book or haven't know, seen it, it is available on Amazon. I will leave a link in the uh, comments, but it has been written in a conversational style. So it is not written as a textbook. And uh, what is amazing is that, you know, it is like a like this conversation, right? Two people talking or more than two people in some uh, chapters. They are talking uh, amongst friends and, uh, you know, the concept is explained through that conversation. Extremely creative uh, way. Um, so 
but but that's about the book this this show is not about the book though this show is to take what we can learn from you know in terms of uh, financial independence so of course some questions have started coming in but you know i have some tough questions for you already prepared so sure. we will take those first okay uh, the first one is very obvious what really is financial independence and why is it important you know so one way to think of financial independence uh, an amateur or an early starter will think and i have i was one of them that if i can buy anything i can think of i am financially independent now there is nobody in the world who can do that right including you know jeff bezos and others and elon musk and all they can't buy everything right so that is obviously stupidity to think that you financial independence is when you can buy anything that you can think of so it is something else so what is it in your language sure so uh, you know going back uh, to a comment you made in the introduction uh, if if we just think about it like for most of us life ends up being a race uh, to make money it's either for survival right or to add more zeros to our bank account and in in this race kind of you know we end up forgetting the purpose of money right so so from our school days we learn that you know time is money right uh, but the opposite is actually more important to understand that money can create time right so what i mean by that is that you know we all know we have limited amount of time in this world and time is the most important non renewable resource right so what is the purpose of money it's essentially you know financial independence means that if we can reach a stage where we can control our time right that means that you know we can live life on our own terms and then we can do what makes us truly happy right so that is what financial independence means it's not just about having a lot of money in the shortest amount of time being able to buy whatever we want because that may not lead to real happiness right so the point is you know, let's think about what will make us happy right and ensure that money doesn't become a constraint so i'll give an example uh, i'm here in kolkata since the past two days and uh, yesterday i met a businessman like you know who is running a brokerage business for the for more than 25 years and of course he went through a lot of struggles in his initial years but now he's reached a stage where he decides which clients he wants to work with right so he works with retail investors he works with high net worth individuals right but for example if any potential client tells him that they are expecting him to give stock tips he just refuses to deal with them right because he's, he he doesn't want to do it right it may it can end up giving him more business but he doesn't want to do it right or for example if somebody starts haggling on his commissions and so on he refuses to do business with them right so so he's reached a stage where money is not a constraint from him for him and he wants to do something in a way that makes him happy right that's one way i met a couple yesterday both of them were working professionals uh, and both of them retired at 50 and I asked them so like you know what are you doing now so they are both into art and painting right because that's what it makes them happy right so these are just two examples right and the way i think about it for myself is you know if if i could control my time if i am not answerable to anyone what is it that i would like to do that would give me true happiness right and that is what financial independence helps us to do so that is the right way to think about it no fantastic i think um, making it a, i i don't i won't say that you made it spiritual but you def- definitely made it more having a calming influence that it is neither easy nor out of reach right so yes. that is how yes. i look at it right so it won't just happen by sitting around you will have to do something about it and that is where i i can relate it to the pa- other passion that you have which is running although yes. we will not discuss yes. running today but since i have done a little bit of running including several half marathons and two full marathons i know a little bit uh, of what you might be going through when you do full marathons on a regular basis that and that's probably why you titled the book uh, the way it is that it is a financial independence marathon it is not going to you can start today but it is not going to end tomorrow it's it's a very very long journey and uh, you have to enjoy the journey like you enjoy a run anything right, exactly. on that Yeah, yeah exactly so uh, just to add see financial independence is not a goal that we like you know strive for right it's like you mentioned it's a journey that we go on right and like any other journey it's if we learn to enjoy it we can sustain it right else we will stop in between right so 
so I'm, you know, I'm part of a running academy, like, you know, we, where there's a coach and he helps us train and we train during weekdays and go on long runs on Sunday, right? And many times new people come, uh, they come for a few days to try it out, right? And uh, you can see that, you know, when they come and the coach asks them, what's, you know, what do you want to do? So they say, okay, my goal is to run the marathon, full marathon next year, right? And then, okay, the coach is fine, like, you know, just go and run 100 meters and come, right? Or run 250 meters and come, right? And they go all out, right? And they come back and they are tired because they have not been doing this, right? And then you can see just over the next two, three days, most of them drop out, right? So, because, you know, the in their mind, running a marathon is a, is a goal that they want to do, right? Whereas people who, who run marathons, you know, who have been doing that, they understand that to run a marathon, you have to enjoy running, you know, that's what, like your goal, I mean, it's not a goal, it's like, okay, I enjoy running and that's when I will be able to run the full marathon, right? So that's only when I can sustain it. It's a similar way, financial independence, if I just put it as a goal that I want to earn or I want to have X amount of money in my bank account, then I'll be financially independent and I can do what I want. You may not be able to sustain it because then you will think, okay, let me try to earn that money as quickly as possible, do whatever it takes, right? It's just like going all out in running a 100 meter sprint and then getting tired and then forget about running a full marathon, right? So instead of that, just keep in mind that fine, like, you know, it's a journey that I will be on. It is going to take some time. But I want to enjoy it. And that's the only way I will sustain this journey. Absolutely fascinating. So, uh, you know, and I can totally relate to what you're saying because I've seen this happen, including I was one of the persons who went away after two, three days in the first time that I tried. But then I thought about it and realized that, you know, obviously it is not going to happen in one week or one month. It is uh, much more than even a year practice and training and hard work that will get you there. But uh, coming back to the financial independence topic, so I did mention briefly that, you know, with, with the current economic scenario and all, financial independence actually even becomes even more important. Yes. And at least running towards or going towards financial independence becomes more important. So some industries have been laying off people recently. And you and I know, being in the industry, senior people that, you know, this will keep happening. It may right. happen this year, it may not happen for two years, then it will again happen for some time, right? So this is a cycle you and I have seen many times. But would being on the path of financial independence have helped some of the people who are impacted, particularly slightly mid-career and senior people? Would, would that have helped in any way? Yeah, definitely. See, I think, uh, you know, I have uh, been reading some of the messages on social media and in newspapers that people who have been recently let go, right, that they have put, right, and in a majority of the cases, like more than 90% of the cases, it's apparent that, you know, most of these people were not prepared. It came as a shock to them, right, and uh, uh, there are two aspects to this. So one is, of course, the immediate uh, reaction, uh, where most of them then, you know, start looking for a job, for example, and then they're in a race against time, because especially for uh, you know, um, people in the middle ages, they have a lot of responsibilities, right? Whether it's your EMIs, your kids' education, your responsibilities of your parents, for example. And if you're not taking separate medical insurance or if you're thinking about a retirement, right? All of these kind of uh, gives a lot of stress, right? Because you're not prepared or you're not thought about all these aspects, right? So then it becomes a race against time to quickly find another job, another opportunity. And uh, in that desperation, many people then take up some job that which may not be the best fit for their interests and you know their capabilities right so it's like taking a step back in your career and uh, instead of that for example if someone thinks through it you know while they are doing the job and thinks that okay i need to have an emergency fund in place anything can happen at any time right so at least let me build up an emergency fund of one year which can take care of my expenses for one year in case something untoward happens it may be job loss it may be a medical emergency. So that gives you breathing room, right? That in the sense that you are in control, right? You can take three months, six months to find a good opportunity that you like rather than being forced to jump into something that is not per as your interests and capabilities, right? So that is a one uh, something in the short term. But now, like you mentioned, if we, if we take a medium to long term view on this, there is a lot of disruption that's going to happen now, right? Like we've already seen example, now this, this chat GPT coming in, you can see that a lot of work 
that people are doing right now can be automated right will get automated and it's not going to be like us where you know somebody will be in a particular role for 10 20 30 years right the cycles are going to be shorter for the next generation right yeah. uh, and uh, it 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 may not be just layoffs it may be like disruption happens and you have to move on you have no choice right so in that case being financially independent becomes more important because you know the disruptions will happen faster you will have to keep shifting to something different like you know maybe every 3 to 5 years you never know right and what do you do in that case so so there it becomes more important that you have some savings that you can fall back on so for example personally you know when i uh, started uh, i was very naive like you know i didn't have any background in finance and uh, i started working in the us and i was very fortunate that uh, one of my seniors came to just have a chat with me a few months into my job and he advised me to start saving and investing right and till then i had never thought of it like my paycheck used to come i used to spend money and whatever remained remained in my savings account right that was the first time i put some thought into okay what do i need to do and i started investing and so on right so then slowly over time i built up an emergency fund of one year then it i built increased it to two years and right now i have an emergency fund of three years right so i have those funds in fds and that gives me some confidence that if anything happens whatever it is right at least i will have some time to think through things and find something good that i like to do rather than being forced into doing something uh, that i don't want to do so so that again like you know is is, is a basic thing which uh, especially you know the younger generation needs to understand because the earlier you could start the better off you will be and uh, the middle age whoever is there i mean it, they can do it a little bit more easier in case you know their income levels are higher but this is the first step one needs to take especially given the current environment three years of emergency fund uh, you know the um, so uh, those in the audience extremely important maybe tip number 1 or uh, uh, not even tip uh, life lesson number 1 is that please have an emergency fund minimum one year and if you are as prudent as you know then maybe even three years minimum one year is what he suggested emergency fund is something that you uh, keep it aside from your uh, savings and other things and you it is completely for your consumption if something really goes wrong you are not dipping into your savings you are not dipping into your investments you are not dipping into your other uh, things that you are trying to create right so it, it's like a better version of liquid money in your um, uh, bank so pankaj mishra has asked uh, how to calculate uh, emergency fund an example you know vinod just shared but i think pankaj detailed thing can be later but general principle and saving vinod some time is that you you estimate your basic expenses not fancy expenses basic expenses and use that for one year this should include anything that you are paying right so you cannot stop emi you cannot stop other yeah. things all of that is in in this right so if you are making mutual fund investments uh, moderate at least and any emi and all, all that is included in this generally one year is um, particularly in volatile times one year is minimum expected because that is the time you will need to re or bring back your career on uh, track okay um, so so one topic we discuss of course emergency fund which is extremely important for a financial independence um, journey uh, little bit more deeper into this we know now much of financial independence is about multiple income streams uh, and having a passive income stream as well right so multiple income streams some of them may, may be active but definitely some passive right is this right you know this is my understanding uh, after having explored the subject for last few years and can you explain this a little bit more for our audience what is active what is passive and how do we get into this yeah so uh, that that is the traditional understanding that you know financial independence means we should have multiple passive income streams but i have a slightly different take on that because see what has happened is i have seen uh, in my own family how uh, you know my close relations are saving and investing and over the past 4 years as part of my job i have done more than 400 sessions with all types of investors retail investors high net worth individuals uh, mutual fund distributors financial advisors right so it's given me a lot of inputs and perspectives into how people think and you know, just as an example like you know uh, especially in india you know many people think okay 
one way to get a passive income stream is like you know we buy some properties and we get rental income right uh, and many people do that uh, they buy multiple real estate properties and try to get some rental income out of that uh, and that's the reason why real estate is such a popular investment in india right but one needs to keep in mind that if you see the last 5 6 years real estate hasn't been a good investment as such there hasn't been an appreciation of your capital right and uh, typically the rental yield ends up being much lower than any emis or the payment that you're making for that property right so it may not be a good investment and that's why uh, i prefer to think of uh, financial independence in a slightly different way uh, so where see the 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 first point is that our investment first has to beat inflation right and then second it should be able to generate income that can cover our expenses right so that is that is what i said earlier if i am getting an income at the end of the day that covers my expenses then i am free to do what i like to do right so that is the whole point right so now how do we achieve this and the the best way to achieve this is to understand some basic concepts right so first concept is compounding right so what it means is that we have to find some investment avenues where the interest that or the uh, you know uh, the interest income that you get or the profits that you make are higher than the inflation rate okay that is a basic point second is to understand the concept of risk before return now typically anything that gives a higher interest or higher profits than your bank fds is associated with slightly higher risk right so you need to understand what is the risk involved in that particular investment and that's where we come into the concept of asset allocation right so so then you need to understand basic concept of different asset classes so whether it's stocks or bonds or mutual funds or passive funds or even like this entire crypto nft craze that happened or investing in startups right we need to understand the basics of these asset class in terms of what is the risk involved what kind of returns they can generate historically what has been their track record right is it a right fit for our uh, kind of way of thinking everybody has a different risk profile everybody has a different way of thinking so is it a good fit with how we think right so you understand the basics of these different asset classes and then we need to diversify across these asset classes so our portfolio should have some exposure to multiple of these asset classes right so in my own portfolio for example like i said i have my emergency fund in fds right i have investments in equity mutual funds in fixed income mutual funds i have some direct investments in stocks right uh, recently i have invested in a in a few startups also i have stayed away from crypto though <laughs> so it's not necessary that you know we have to have an investment in every asset class but the idea is like you know if you see historically uh, at different points in time different asset classes do well okay so for example in one year equities which is stocks the stock market may do well in another year for example gold and silver may do well in a third year fixed income or bonds may do well right so the, the concept is that these asset classes are called are said to be negatively correlated because if one doesn't do well something else does well right and hence from a portfolio point of view we need to diversify across these asset classes and that overall overall end of the day has to generate a return which is higher than inflation and which can cover my expenses right so that's if that happens then i am financially independent then i don't need to depend on a job or anything else uh, to cover my expenses right i can only depend on my investment portfolio and then i can go and do what makes me happy so that is the way i think about it and i think that is the best way rather than the traditional way where we think okay let me just uh, you know invest uh, buy some real estate and depend on the rental income or you know let me uh, look at where i can get the highest interest rate on some loans and do that right so that may not work yeah especially i think like you explained very beautifully that you know with varying of course today there are multiple asset classes compared to maybe 25 years ago so that of course more choice creates more confusion plus uh, you know uh, our goals are different like I, i think you clearly said that when our income from these sources is can cover our expenses that's the time when we can start thinking of about doing what we want to do or or we may feel independent relatively independent uh, so yeah so that that's important um, before we move 
there are a couple of questions uh, i think you you stirred some uh, audience by talking of emergency fund but um, kostav has asked a question around in what form should we keep the emergency fund you said fds but are there any options uh, so i know some options but i would like to hear from you uh, vinod yeah yeah sure so uh, you know fds is the easiest uh, to do that's why i have kept it there but the next best option is some uh, the uh, fixed income mutual funds essentially right so these may be liquid funds these may be ultra short term funds or some low duration funds so anything where the risk is low you know where you will not lose that money i mean you can't afford to lose your emergency fund right so, so don't worry. maybe liquidity is slightly higher, uh, higher like you exactly. mentioned debt debt related uh, funds or uh, you know which yes. are similar question came from pankaj so and uh, our good friend aniket as well uh, but i think we've answered all these questions so yeah, yeah. Um, so just uh, just to add to that because uh, the the reason i have kept uh, three years in emergency fund because i have a separate mutual fund portfolio also right so so in case i'm not suggesting 3 years for even like uh, in one of my linkedin post anshuman you may remember i had mentioned that uh, nikhil kamath <laughs> who is one of right. the co-founders of zero da he has a emergency fund of 5 years right so everybody mm-hmm. has a different view based on the experiences in life right uh, so you may i mean that's what i said one year should be sufficient it's basically what is the role of the emergency fund that it gives you breathing time in case something untoward happens to like you know collect yourself and think through your next move and make the best move possible rather than a suboptimal move right and i think so, you know i i can add my uneducated sure. uh, um, views here that as you get a little older uh, a if un- something untoward happens to your career it may not be possible quickly to return to work right? right so if you are 25 you might find a job again in 3 months 6 months but if you are 50 like me you may not find another job in 3 months so yes. it it obviously takes longer that second is that your responsibilities are much higher you have elderly parents you have growing children and you know a household to manage so obviously the requirement is also higher and for longer right. so what may be okay for a 25 30 32 35 year old will not be okay for uh, somebody who's uh, more uh, senior in age or right. in career because they may not be able to come back at all and they may actually move into retirement from there um, you know that happens to uh, it has happened to some of my friends and can happen to us um, but uh, so that's another aspect which people who are slightly senior may want to keep in mind that their needs are very different from a 20 25 year old and the one year works for that age group but and for nikhil kamath because his obviously his life is different so he is more prudent and maybe less risk averse uh, and maybe that's why running a fantastic uh, company uh, so my very good friend and um, half spiritual half businessman rajan uh, santanam um, he is asking isn't if i uh, state of mind once the mind stop chasing anything we become free Uh, right um, and what do you think uh, gentlemen so it's been a while somebody has called me a gentleman so i'll reflect <laughs> let let we know the answer that question um, it's yes. actually a comment more than a question he's right of course but anything that you can add to yeah that? of course so that's what uh, you know you see i decide uh, i estimate what my expenses are going to be right so if i am in that state of mind where i can live like a monk right then i don't need a lot of money right so it's as simple as that whereas if i am if i am a household to manage right then it's not just my goals my expectations right my family members also have some thoughts on how they want to live their life right yeah. and till they are independent it's my responsibility to make sure that you know they can do they can reach that stage right so it's yeah. not just about yeah. like you and me it's if we have people around us right who we are yeah. responsible for then we have to think along those lines also so everybody so that's what i you know i can't decide for example like you know how much money you need right only you can decide how much money you need to to think that you are financially free so it's a individual thing uh, and that's why i said you know everybody has a different uh, thought process and uh, all the whatever i'm saying the investments that i'm talking about they may not be the right fit right so for example a lot of people youngsters invested in crypto 
I think you and I didn't invest because it didn't fit our mindset, right? Something Correct. didn't kind of click. So we didn't invest. So it's the same thing. We were, we were not probably in that risk profile where we had the income to spare. And uh, in a way, I'm glad. <laughs> <we did>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but time will tell whether we were right or wrong. And um, yeah. I'm happy if I'm wrong in that sense because I made an informed choice. So right. that's fine. you brought up a good point. Uh, and, and thanks, Rajan, for your question. But you, know, you brought up a good point about expenses. So generally, I feel that no level of income is enough if we don't have a control on our expenses. Right. And I was only yesterday in another show where I was the guest and I was speaking to a younger audience. And I did share that if you are not saving more than 50% of your income, you need to relook at your expenses. Uh, because And 50 is a number. It could be 45, it could be 60. But 50 is a number, good number to think of if you are not looking at uh, that number. But that is the way I think. Any as an expert, what is your say on this? Because I do feel that a frugal life and uh, aggressive savings is is also a part of financial independence because that will allow you to have investment in 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 asset classes that will eventually grow. So right. that is my point of view. But as I said, uninformed, uneducated. But um, anything on this? Yeah. So here also see the. Uh... The general way of thinking is our income minus our expenses is equal to our savings, right? That's how we think. If I am sure. earning 100 rupees, my paycheck is 100 rupees a month, then like, you know, let's see, I'm I, at the end of the month, I'll see, oh, I spent, you know, 90 rupees, I have 10 rupees of savings, right? And maybe I'll decide where to invest that, right? Or I may not end up with any savings at all, right? So we need to really invert this equation, right? So it has to be income minus savings equal to expenses, right? And what that means is, so for example, for somebody who is a, let's say a 25 to 30 year old, right? So if I'm getting 100 rupees as my paycheck, first thing to do, I save 20 rupees out of it, right? That means I have only 80 rupees to spend. So then I do need to figure out what I can spend that on, right? So if it means that by the 25th of the month, I'm almost out of money to, you know, spend, then I don't go and party with my friends. That has to happen next month, right? But that 20 rupees that I have saved is, I consciously see, okay, where I should invest that every month, right? Now, these are, the reason I said is at a younger age, maybe the income is lower. So you can think of saving, you know, 20%. And Anshuman, like you mentioned, as we grow older, maybe the income rises and then you can start thinking, okay, I'll save 30% every month, 40% every month, and like you see, 50% every month, right? So, but the main point is, Income minus savings equal to expenses, right? That is the equation that should be there in our mind. That's the only way that we can then, you know, build a portfolio that and we can have some hope of becoming financially independent. If you are always waiting, like, you know, income minus expenses, we'll see and how much we save and then we'll invest. It's not going to work. It doesn't work, right? So we have all seen that in our lives. We have seen that with our parents, right? So, so that has been proven to not work. So we need to be a little bit more proactive than that. And once, yeah. I mean, once we have saved the 20, 30, 40% initially, whatever amount is left, that you can decide whatever you, you know you want to spend on, whatever makes you happy. Fair enough. Uh, so obviously, you know, younger people who are in this call or will see this show later, uh, save first, invest first, then think of spending. That shiny phone can wait. And, um, you know, obviously... I know people, sadly, you know, who whose phone purchase is more than their monthly income. Right. I, that is a sure, short way of, uh, you know, digging a grave for yourself. And then when there is a job loss or some other accident of some kind, then people blame society, environment, company, government, and, you know, universe and Jupiter and Mars. But uh, don't look at what they could have done better that way but uh, that's my rant i will get over that um, sri ram bala subramaniam works with apple he has a question other than emergency funds which are the other structured funds we need to plan for and uh, he has followed up that question with some example to clarify retire example for retirement child education marriage travel etc anything on this obviously i think he's uh, suggesting that should we invest in funds that will cover these uh, right things yes exactly so so this brings up a good point uh, so you know emergency fund is just for one goal right to meet any emergency that happens 
whatever example Sri Ram has mentioned, so whether it's for child's education or marriage or you know purchasing a home or our own retirements and so on, these are all other goals that we will have on our journey, right? And uh, in in that sense. You know, yes, there are investment products that we should be in looking at. So the easiest for us uh, to look at are these are mutual funds, right? So you know, all of us are doing some job or having our own business, and we are not full time. Uh, most of the people are not full time investors, right? So the easiest thing to do is, for example, to invest to build a portfolio of equity mutual funds, fixed income mutual funds, and some commodity like gold or silver ETFs. And maybe now, you know, separately you're also investing in some real estate and so on, right? So, uh, and the idea is that you start like what is called a monthly systematic investment plan or SIP, right? So you you have these goals in your mind, uh, you have some idea of how much money you will need, and from what from the amount that that you're saving every month, you invest, you build a portfolio of maybe eight or ten mutual funds, and over time, right, that portfolio will grow. So you don't need to worry about like you know understanding what's happening in the stock market or timing the market when to invest or not and so on right so every month out of your savings you are systematically investing that money goes into these multiple mutual funds that compounds over time like that's where the concept of compounding comes in so for example if you look at our india stock market for example the nifty 50 index and if you look at the last 20 years the average return which is called the kager return over the 20 years is about 14% Right, so your so your money is growing at, on average at fourteen percent a year. Now that is enough to beat inflation. Inflation typically in India is five six percent on average, right? So you are beating inflation by almost you know eight percent. So that's a fairly uh, good return that one is getting. And if you sustain that for a period of 10, 15, 20 years, then you can easily meet all the goals, right? Whether it's your our own home loan or you know our children's education marriage retirement everything right so so these are the simplest things like you know equity mutual funds fixed income mutual funds some of the uh, commodity etfs and there are products now uh, where you know you just invest in one fund which is called a multi asset allocation fund or an asset allocator fund and in that fund you get this exposure across all these asset classes right so for example uh, the, the multi asset allocation fund invests in stocks in bonds in gold and silver ETFs and in uh, real estate investment trusts, right? So you get exposure to different asset classes in just one fund, right? So all you need to do is on a monthly basis, you continue your SIP or systematic investment plan in, in these funds. And you and the, the best thing is you can continue doing whatever you like, whether it's your job or your business or any other activity and your investments compound over time, right? Fantastic. Um... So I hope, Sriram, you got your answer. Uh, I actually wanted to move to a question uh, related to bringing together running and uh, this thing. But there are some there are some qu questions on this topic that we are covering. So let's cover those. Um, Costa was asking a slightly detailed question. There is a popular trend today, uh, trend currently that we will make as much money as possible for 20, 25 years. And we will we'll get retired or we'll retire by the age of 40 or 50 and enjoy retirement life. Um, I can tell you, Kostov, nobody enjoys retirement life. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, in that sense, that uh, what do you think about the financial freedom and strategies around it? So I think Kostov, um, yeah, you know, did cover a little bit that, you know, it is about the mindset of independence and the ability to do what you wanted to do. For that, you're expenses have to be covered but i let cost of we know that anything above what he has already said to this question sure. yeah so uh see uh it's it's fine uh, to think like you know okay i'll retire by 40 or 50 and then instead of saying retirement i would rather say do what makes me happy right that's a better way to put it right so if you want to retire and sit on the beach, that's okay if you want to paint write poetry that's also okay if you want to start your own business, you know, in something that you like, that's also fine, right? So that's the right way to think about it rather than saying retirement. Like uh, Anjuman is saying, like, you know, if you see retired people, they hate it, right? I mean, they want something to do, right? <laughs> uh, so so that's the thing. But uh, now, now coming back to your first point, which is making as much money as possible for 20, 25 years. So, so there, see, the, the right way to do it is 
to build a good investment portfolio, focus on risk adjusted returns, and it will happen over time, right? Whereas, and the wrong way to do it is to think, oh, crypto is the asset class I want to invest in, which will make me the you know largest amount of money in the fastest time possible. And I put all my savings in crypto. It's basically speculation, and then you know there is a high probability that we will lose our savings, right? So that has happened to many people. So it's it's a good mindset to have that fine, like you know I will I want to kind of become financially independent by X age, whatever it's 40, 45, 50. And after that, I'll do what makes me happy, right? And if I want to achieve that, then work backwards and have a realistic uh, return, risk adjusted return in your mind, right? So it's not possible uh, in most cases, right? Uh, if you think, okay, I'm going to double my money every year. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Because when you're Doing something that can double your money, it can also mean that you you get wiped out. You're you know you lose your investment, right? So a better way to think is okay, maybe you know on average I'll make twelve percent a year, right? So then how much money do I need to save and invest, right? And will it be enough for me to retire at 40, 45, 50 that you can work out easily, right? So so that's the best way to think about it. So that brings a question, you know, the, that um, you said work out easily and and throw. The last 10 15 minutes i've heard you talk about asset uh, multiple asset classes and other things and of course now as a layman as somebody who knows a little bit i understand the asset classes that you explained somebody younger may not understand because they are just starting the journey what kind of help do you think they can get you know can they you know for example there will be an executive coach if you want to help in your career right uh, for financial independence or or something like this, would there be coaches? Would there be portfolio managers? You are one, but obviously you are one within an organization. But how does one go about it? Um, can somebody hire somebody, or or you think just investing in mutual funds then that is okay for most people? Right. So uh, see the key if you want to complete a financial independence journey successfully. What the key is to start early and make informed decisions, right? Which you mm -hmm. highlighted earlier. And how do we do that? So first thing, like I mentioned, is to get the basic concepts clear, right? To understand the concept of inflation, compounding, emergency fund, risk before return, asset allocation, the basics of different asset classes before even you start thinking, okay, that, you know, I need to act on anything, right? And uh, for that, I would suggest really that, you know, you can take a look at my book. That's what, what I have written the book for. So I kept my own family members in mind because I saw that uh, many in my own family were not taking the right investment decisions, right? So, uh, and that gave me the motivation to write this book. So I hope that it will help all the readers uh, to get the basic concepts clear, right? Now, once you have your basic con concepts clear, you will get a realization. Can I do this on my own or should I work with a financial advisor, right? So for example, uh, drawing a parallel to running and running marathons, which I've been doing for the past 13 years, it's only last year that I joined a running academy with a coach, right? For the yeah. past 12 years before that, I prefer to run on my own, right? Run solo because that gave me a lot of joy. Uh, mm -hmm. But now I decided, no, let, you know, uh, I'm growing older now and you hear all this, you read in the news, a lot of people getting health problems, having heart attacks, either in the gym or running marathons and so on. So maybe like, you know, I need to, uh, better. I need to get, uh, you know, uh, work with a coach and so on. Right. And now I'm realizing the difference. I'm understanding some new concepts, which I didn't know about running within my threshold heart rate. So I bought a, a watch, which I never did earlier, which measures my heart rate and you know, I can keep track and I don't cross my threshold heart rate. So it makes things safer for me. Right. So that would be the role of a financial advisor, because what happens if when you're doing things on your own, you know, the markets are very volatile, right? So you may think that, okay, I will invest in the stock market today and I can expect a 12% return, right? But it may happen that the stock market will collect 20, 25% in, in the next year. And it it will play on your mind, right? It will, it will lead to a lot of stress and you may end up panicking and exiting your investments at the wrong time, right? Correct. Whereas if you have a financial advisor, there's somebody you will talk to and they can advise you that fine, you know, markets have gone down but this is how they work. They go up and down. So if they're gone down, then it's better to invest some more money if you have a longer term horizon, right? So that gives a different perspective. Other thing is, okay, which asset classes, how much to invest in which asset class, which mutual funds to invest in, which stocks to invest in, right? If you have the 
interest and the capability and most important the time to do the research and analysis and take those decisions then you can do it on your own if not again working with a financial advisor will make things easier for you so right so so the point is you think about what is it that you like to do right so for example if anshuman like you know he likes to read he likes to write right he is doing other things and if tomorrow he thinks that okay no i want to manage my investments also on my own then he you will have to budget that time which will take away your time from the other things that you like doing right so do you really want to do that so all these aspects are there but step one is to get your basic concepts clear and that's where i would i really recommend that at least you take a look at my book and then decide what you want to do next and just as a reminder those who may have joined the show later or uh, this is the book that we are referring to financial independence marathon uh, unlock the power of your money uh, which is already yours and we know there's of course written this and penguin is the publisher available on amazon uh, already and doing really well very uh, economically priced because his intention is to take the message across to a large audience uh, uh, so please have a look i have left a link in the in both the chats i will leave it again but you can have a look at uh, amazon only available on amazon currently so with that uh, moving ahead uh, you know the um, and while you were talking about the coach and the running thing i did remember that you know i also start did you know several half marathons without a coach and after each run i remember you know i was half dead i had to be literally carried and you know my timing was 235 and for those who are not into this you know 2 hours 35 minutes 30 minutes 32 minutes but after that i usually had like a one week break because my knees would be hurting my ankle would be hurting my back would be hurting i had to be literally carried off uh, the track so the joy of completing the run was there but i realized that this is not how people run when i am seeing so many other and i joined a running academy uh, janagar jaguars in, in which is now there in many places and my within 3 4 months 6 months the first half marathon i did was 218 and i was fine after that i went with, uh, with the family for a lunch after that i was absolutely fine so it is not just the performance but also the mental peace and the overall uh, goodness that comes with working with a coach in any field right not just financial but sports and other fields as well uh, one quick question from somebody whose name i can't read on this um, but um, what is the minimum maximum for 26 year old doing well from an income perspective in terms of monthly sip investment what would be the top 3 or 4 areas in this group can age group can invest um anything you know this is yeah. a slight yeah. specific question so uh, you know short of giving specific advice if you can give any general yeah so in general you know if you are saying a 26 year old who are doing well from an income perspective then it means you can take higher risk right you have time on your side it also means that most probably you, you are you will be able to save a bit more right depending depends on your lifestyle of course but assuming that you can you know save uh, a higher amount you can take higher risk so larger proportion of your portfolio can be in equities or like you know equity stock equity mutual funds is the easiest thing to do so uh, normally for your age group you can have the highest allocation like you know almost 75% or slightly higher even to equity mutual funds and the remaining can be to some uh, debt mutual funds and to commodity like gold or silver etfs but for you equity mutual funds would be the way to go because you really have a long time horizon and time is uh, you know was on your side yeah so um, vivian gomes um, has message that he just bought the book <laughs> thank Thanks. you vivian and um, i think the previous question was also from him so okay moving on uh, we are into the last few minutes uh, but um, one or two more questions and then we will also check whether some questions from the audience is there uh, what is rapid fire what stock versus mutual fund what would you so, have <laughs> uh, so given that i work in a mutual fund company uh, there are a lot of restrictions on me so i invest in mutual funds and i recommend mutual funds for the general public i think something that you said earlier made a lot of sense you know that and you took my example and I, i'll i'll continue with that example that i have a full time job i have of course other interests in reading writing you know i'm quite active in these kind of you know social 
media if i have to invest heavily in stocks and keep a track i won't be able to have the time or the expertise and if i want to build the expertise and give it the time then i can't do the other stuff and there is a there is actually in the last 3 4 years when i started act, actively investing i burnt my finger on two three very in famous stocks that we will not name in this um, including one ipo which uh, everybody suggested don't invest and i did uh, so after that i have been extremely wise that you know mutual fund is fine or if you have to invest in stocks just go for the uh, major ones which you know that in the longer run will do well right. so um, uh, sri ram has also bought your book um, so okay. thanks sri ram once again um, Shriram is a classmate of mine, so you know okay. I can bully him a little bit. <laughs> so, um, one and anything on property versus gold, you know. So this is a question that when I spoke to some people about the show, um, and it, I, it has been a question with me as well. You know, property versus gold as investment. What is your view? It doesn't have yeah. to be one versus the other, but you oh, know sure. what are the benefits, pros and cons. Yeah, so we just need to understand the difference between these two asset classes, right? So property investment typically is a larger ticket size. Gold can be a smaller ticket size investment as and in when we can do it, right? Second, yeah. property typically is more illiquid in the sense that you can't just exit your, mm. you can't just sell your house or your flat or your land when you need it for the price you want, right? right. Uh, whereas gold typically has a market price, you know, it's easier to buy and sell uh, whenever you want it, right? Third, now, you know, uh, you can buy gold in digital form. You can just buy a gold ETF or a sovereign gold bonds, which makes things very streamlined. You don't need to worry about the purity of the gold you're buying or, you know, storing it, the safety and all those aspects, right? Uh, because it's just a, an ETF or a, a bond that you're buying. Whereas in property, again, there are all those issues associated, like, you know, is the title clean? If you buy a land piece of land somewhere or a house somewhere else, who is going to look after it, maintain it and so on. Right? So all those aspects are there. Uh, now, given the you know mindset in India, of course, people like to have some tangible asset for their money, right? And that's why most people invest in real estate because it gives that tangible feeling. Yeah, I bought that flat there, right? So, uh, so, so it comes down to the mindset. Also, because unlike some other asset classes, Real estate does not go down that much, so the yes. negative is limited. Upswing may not be as much. So yeah. historically, or you know, when people invested heavily in real estate, there was some logic because at that time the in, in, inflation was not that high, so they were saving it from downward uh, swing. Right. But other asset classes could go down. Gold can swing, but usually yeah. real estate does not swing too much lower down. Uh, yes. It may not go up, but it does not um, come down as much. So there are some pros and cons, like uh, Vinod said, and uh, please make informed decision. Uh, one important thing, we, uh, Vinod works for a asset management company and I work for, <laughs> don't work for any financial company, but it is important for us to remind you that none of the discussion in this uh, conversation, entire one hour, is meant to be an investment advice. Uh, this is only an educational content shared with, any decision you take based on this, uh, please consult an expert or do it at your own uh, risk. Uh, uh, neither of us are legally liable to to to, uh, to stand up for our advice in uh, this. Um, so it is important because obviously you know uh, yes some people do do the madness of you know picking one word and then um, hanging on to it and then accusing others of the advice. So this whole show is meant for, you know, opening our, our mind and eyes for various avenues that are there towards uh, the road to financial independence. And um, that's the only intent. Some more questions have come in uh, from Tarun Kohli and a couple of other people. And Saurabh Tyagi has also bought the book. So thank you, Saurabh. Uh, uh, Tarun has asked a Quick question, and this might be the last one. Some experts say investing in real estate is not advisable in comparison to other options. Do you agree? So, we know did partly answer this question. You know, there is nothing right or wrong. Uh, it depends on your, uh, you know, individual state, uh, Tarun. Uh, but um, age group is 50, 55 years with higher education and two kids done, but they are yet to get married. So, I think his specific question based on the description is that. 
for himself and i know tarun a little bit uh, so for somebody with this profile is a real estate investment advisable or not advisable let's assume so, that he already has a house which he is staying in right no so think of it like you know whatever money you are going to invest in that real estate is going to get tied up there right and when do you want that money back right uh, will you be able to exit that investment when you want the money right so that is the main question for you as given uh, what you have said right so that's why i mentioned that real estate is not a liquid asset class so when you want to sell you may not get the price that you have in mind right so will you be able to meet whatever uh, financial obligations you have right so that is the key question you need to ask yourself so there are some similar questions from pankaj and all i i can maybe add a little bit uh, and and this is all there in your book as well there are now slightly more liquid real estate opportunities as well reits which are real estate yeah. investment uh, trust which works very similar to mutual funds but not exactly the same so those who are who want to go deeper into this you can um, you know speak to your financial advisor or do more research to get there but in this show we only want to do open up your mind and also put you on the path to financial independence and once again uh, if you want to do that read uh, vinod's book extremely well written in terms of a conversation and, and i i do read a lot but i don't usually read more than a chapter or 5 to 10 pages at one time but in this one i read more than two chapters in one go Uh, mainly because of the style that you know uh, you used because it is highly conversational it feels like you are sitting in that room when four friends three friends uh, or a family member is talking and you are just listening to that conversation so really well done if i ever write a book i am going to steal your style <laughs> so yeah. we'll we'll do that um, but um, the last question uh, and we are up on time but last question so we will of course read your book right i i am already reading right so you can see the bookmark as well i am already reading but what is the book on financial independence or financial prudence or, or that kind of topic you would recommend other than your book sure no i would uh, really recommend uh, the joys of compounding by gautam bed hmm. uh, and anshuman if you see the cover page of my book he has yeah. provided a blurb, right so because uh, i really found you know in recent time this is one of the best books uh, not it's not just about investing it's about investing mindset right so mm -hmm. what the book helps you do is understand yourself and other you know how others around us think that's first step second is how to kind of think of investing in terms of like you know how to build a process for yourself right so it's about okay you can as simple as having a journal where you note down whatever it is that whatever questions you have or what you need to think about right So if you're thinking about whether I should invest in real estate or gold, then what would what are you thinking about, like in terms of each asset class, why to invest or why not to invest? Because later on you can come back and see, okay, why did I take that decision? And having a simple checklist when you are thinking through things about, you know, your financial obligations or the financial plan that you are building, right, or whatever investment that you are doing. So if you have that documentation in place, it gives you more confidence, and you can go back and see, okay, was I thinking the right direction or not do i need to make any changes right mm. so and of course he talks about investing for the long term which is the right mindset to have right so like i mentioned if if we think of financial independence as a race which we need to finish in the shortest time possible making the most amount of money the chances are very high that we will fail right because then we are going to invest in riskier asset classes and that most probably most of the time doesn't work so it's important to have a long term mindset like i said think of financial independence as a journey not just as a goal and in that sense this book the joys of compounding helps you build that mindset right so it's not just about which stock to buy or which mutual fund to buy it's more about building your own mindset and i found it to be one of the best books i read on investing no thanks thanks vinod uh, just as a reminder the book uh, vinod is referring is joys of compounding by gautam bed and uh, also available on all bookstores so in case you want to go uh, deeper or diverse your reading in this topic you can do that uh, vipin vedanathan is saying that um, thanking you and thanks a lot thank vipin thanks so with that i'll bring the show to an end uh, my apologies that i we've gone over time a little bit but this conversation was so engaging and interesting and i could almost see uh, that 
this is like a private tuition you know this teaching me how to be more financially independent or how to think about it and i also had an audience so thank you you know the for um, of course being the educator that you are and my lovely audience and uh, you know my father has also attended the show today so so i am hoping that i will get a lecture today later uh, on what i did right and wrong but um, i'll take it uh, so once again thank you very much uh, and uh, we will we will of course uh, be in touch and with that uh, i usually end the show with uh, with the information on the next show but uh, this time i don't have somebody lined up for next saturday still not confirmed so i'm trying to get somebody to speak uh, to talk about public speaking and how to speak confidently and uh, to senior leaders but uh, not confirmed yet so i will not announce and uh, see you soon thank you bye bye thanks